Uh, right. Okay, in this section of the module, what I'm going to do is introduce you to the icing model, which is one of the classic sort of toy models in the physical sciences for understanding collective behavior. The IC model was invented to describe the behavior of atoms on a lattice. And in particular, in this case, we're going to do a two-dimensional lattice. So here's our lattice. At every point here, imagine that there's an atom, right, some sort of object. And what we're going to do is we're going to simplify, for the purposes of this toy example, we're going to simplify these atoms and say that they can only be in one of two possible states. They can either be in spin up, which we'll call plus one, or they can be in spin down, which is minus one. And all of these terms are taken from increasing simplifications of what the actual states of an atom are. In the icing model, what happens is that atoms that are on two neighboring parts of the lattice Graph theoretically, two graph theoretic neighbors, two neighbors connected by an edge, or two nodes connected by an edge, if they're in the same state, or rather, sorry, if this one is in the plus one state, this atom here will also want, quote unquote, to be in the plus one state. And similarly, if this one is in the minus one state, this one here will also desire to be in the minus one state. But there's no causal effects propagating through this system, at least not how the IC model is usually defined. Instead, what we say is that there's a general propensity for neighbors to find themselves in the same state. And the icing model is just a fancy phrase for the exact mathematical specification of how things that are near each other, things that are near each other want to act like each other. Here is how we write the icing model. We talk about a probability distribution over all of the states of the atoms in this lattice. And in general, think about a lattice extending forever. But for now, if you like, just think about a small patch. Each point here is described by a single number, which we'll call sigma, and the label of that atom's position. So then the set of all of these variables here defines the entire state of the system. The probability of finding this lattice in a particular configuration, meaning in a particular pattern of plus ones and minus ones, is equal to the following quantity, e to the beta times the sum over the network of sigma i and sigma j divided by a normalization constant. Okay, so let's walk through this expression here term by term. The core here is this sum over all of the lattice pairs in the system. J, I, J, we define as equal to 1 if the two nodes I and J are neighbors. If you've done any of the networks, units, and complexity explorer, you can think of the JIJ as the adjacency matrix. And what this does is it multiplies together two states or two atoms, the state of two atoms in the system, if they're connected by one of these edges. Okay. So if we sum over all of the possible nodes in the system, then what we end up doing is coming up with a sum, which is the product of all of these pairs. So that's what that term is there. It's a big product of, let's say, sigma 1 times sigma 2 plus sigma 2 times sigma 3. If, for example, this node here is sigma 1, this node here is sigma 2, and this node here is sigma 3. Say this node is sigma 4, just to drive your intuition. Notice that there's no edge between sigma 1 and sigma 4 in this lattice. So what that means is that you will not get a term like sigma 1 times sigma 4, but you will get a term like sigma 2 times sigma 4. Okay? So this sum here just turns into a big sum of products of all of the neighbor pairs. Okay. Notice that if two neighbors have the same state, if they're both plus 1, then that term will contribute positively to the sum. Similarly, if they're both minus 1, then they'll both contribute positively to the sum because minus 1 times minus 1 is 1. 
So what this sum is doing informally is it's counting up the number of pairs that are in the same state and subtracting off the number of pairs that are in opposite states. So you take that, which is a sum essentially telling you how coordinated all the nodes are. That sum gets larger and larger as more and more neighbors stay in the same state. Okay? You take that sum there and you multiply it by this term beta. Beta is kind of a parameter that we can turn. It's like a knob. If you're a physicist, you can think of it as an inverse temperature. As beta gets larger and larger and larger, okay, when the neighbors start to align, this sum overall gets larger and larger. We take the exponential of that okay, and divide by a normalization constant, and that gives us the probability. What that means is that if you align more and more of these nodes, if you put them all into the same state, that configuration is more likely. It becomes even more likely if you increase beta. As beta gets larger and larger, the benefit to all being in the same state for the overall probability of that configuration gets larger. As beta gets smaller and smaller, it matters less and less. So take the extreme case where beta equals zero. So sure, maybe everybody is aligned, so that term there is really large, but then that's multiplied by zero, so it doesn't matter. And in fact, the contribution when beta is zero for all of the nodes in exactly the same state, perfectly aligned, is equal to a case where they're just kind of turned on and off randomly, plus one and minus one randomly. But as beta goes from zero to non-zero as it gets larger and larger, in fact, then this term here starts to matter. So what I've done here is give you a little intuition about how this probability distribution here describes the behavior of a system where individuals like to be in the same state. And even though this began, this model began as a story about how atoms in a lattice behave, people have taken it as models for all sorts of systems, including, for example, how people form opinions. And now, in this case, the edges between two nodes correspond to communication edges as opposed to physical proximity. For now, what we're going to do is we're going to deal with the simple grid and talk about how this probability distribution here, which is effectively the model for the icing model, the model of how these things tend to switch on and off, how this distribution here behaves if you coarse grain this lattice. 